city of Tangshan, located in the Hebei province of China, sprouted upon what was a nest of coal and iron ore underneath it. 1938, the Tangshan administrative unit was designated a city and prospered with a focus on heavy industries. Factories manufacturing steel, producing ceramics, composed the backbone of the economy of a fast-growing population. By the 1960s, over a million people resided in the city. Agricultural industry in the area was thriving as well, and the development of Tangshan became an important national transportation and telecommunications station, which only helped to further accelerate economic growth. The 1976 Tangshan earthquake scored 7.8 on the Richter scale and was considered one of the most devastating earthquake disasters ever to strike China. The earthquake collapsed over three-fourths of the city complex and left a death toll of over 200,000 people and even more were injured and homeless. The disaster, however, also showed how the self-reliant and socialist ideology of the Maoist regime contradicted with the pragmatism and practicality of Deng Xiaoping's government. The resultant recovery and reconstruction of Tangshan documents the tumultuous turn of events that allowed political and social development in China. Tangshan lies at the junction of two faults, the Yanshan Fold Fault and the Kandong Fault, and on top of sediment deposited during the Quaternary Period. The city was poorly planned under the leadership of Mao, resulting in a densely populated area of urban sprawl. The buildings were built in extreme proximity to each other, and were built in poor quality, and were never subjected to building codes, supervision, or inspection. The demand for new buildings and the lack of funds resulted in the death trap for hundreds of thousands of lives, as the most populated district unfortunately lies directly on top of the fault. The loose sediment the city was built on did little to damper the earthquake. The earthquake was of magnitude 7.8 and occurred at approximately 3.42 a.m. July 28, 1976. It was a right lateral strike-slip event and was the largest continental intraplate earthquake ever recorded. The local seismic network did not detect any foreshocks leading up to the event, indicating that there was a buildup of seismic stress. The aftershocks of the earthquake carried on until four years later, in 1980, though 14 of the 29 major aftershocks occurred just the day after the event. The damage done during the Tangshan earthquake is what makes it one of the most historical earthquakes in history. There were 240,000 deaths accounted for, and over 799,000 people were injured. The zone of maximum destruction spans from Tangshan to its southern suburb along the beijing Shanhanaguan Railway. Some reporters were able to gather personal accounts from the earthquake victims. One person said, That night, I couldn't sleep, and I lay in bed just dozing. Suddenly, I was woken by a bright flash in the sky, and the room was brilliantly lit as if by lightning. There was a roaring sound, like a very big wind, except that the air was still, and there were intermittent sounds of explosions. And the great shaking motion began, up and down. Preceding the earthquake, there are accounts of strange animal activity. One account said that chickens ran about wildly right before the earthquake struck. Another said that goldfish jumped out of their fish bowls at 2 a.m. in the morning right before the earthquake. At the time of the earthquake, the Chinese government denied all help and international aid even from the United Nations and the Red Cross. The government wanted to deal with the tragedy by themselves. The day after the earthquake, China sent out helicopters and planes to drop off food and medicine to the city. Shanghai was a major support during the rescue efforts. They also sent out medical aid. The People's Liberation Army sent out about 30,000 troops to help rescue victims from the rubble. Even with all the help the Chinese government supplied, there were still about 160,000 homeless families left after the aftermath. If reconstruction was done by the Chinese Communist Party headed by Hui Gaifeng, Tangshan City would resume its former disorganized and highly dense environment, with planning designated by party caters. It seemed as if Tangshan's fate was transformed from a platform for political football to an exercise of pragmatic science. Yet seeing how highly uniform new Tangshan looks, it differs from western cities as well. 
If the Chinese followed the Western ways of the 1970s completely and accepted foreign aid, the new Tangshan would be a modern city dotted with grandeur skyscrapers. Instead, a balance was struck between the two, as the modern-day Tangshan was formed and grown, and still continues to grow to this day.